Jo. Welcome to another stream on Timmy Talks. We're back at the Winter Derby. We're at the top eight, a match between Coast Kramer on the deck against Mike Van Dyke, who's on four color him. And um, with me today again is Nick, our deck specialist. How are you doing, Nick? I'm very good. Thank you. So uh, how are you? Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm good. And I'm looking forward to the match, actually, because it's going to be really different. It's going to be very challenging uh, for the deck, I think. Maybe it's nice to first have a look at the deck of Mike. Yeah, um, sure. So I'm putting it on screen now for everybody to see. And I'm, I'm seeing a lot of creatures. That's the first thing I notice. Yeah, I've seen a I've, I'm seeing a lot of colors also. <laughs> it's, a, it's a four color uh, mid-range deck. Um, yeah, a little bit of everything, I would say. I guess black uh, is the dominant color, right? With those four him to Turek, of course, having access to Fallen Empires in this format and also the uh, two um, Pump Knights. Yeah, the Pump Knights could be could be difficult for Coast to deal with. Uh, I think Abyss, Abyss and uh, Balance um, are the two ways for Coast to deal with the Orders. And for the rest, I think only him to Turek and uh, the specters are the ones that uh, Mike has four copies of. So uh, yeah, and that's the dominant color. And he's not color. playing with dark ritual, so he's not going to do the classic ritual into hippie. Indeed, yeah. 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 I and think it's also a bit too tricky. Yeah? If your hippie gets removed, then uh, yeah, it's usually card disadvantage, right? You're setting yourself up for card disadvantage. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's good. I think the sideboard is 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 really good. It's also interesting to see that he's playing with three red cards. Yeah. And um, I'm just gonna send one message. And let's see. So and 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 he's only playing with three red cards, but I guess it's worth it when one of them is a fireball and the two set trolls. And the three lightning bolts, huh? Oh, of course. I didn't see those. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's playing with more. Let's take a quick look at the deck of your brother. So we've looked at this deck before, right? And um, we saw actually the Mirror Universe in action in that game number one. Uh, that was two days ago. That was quite spectacular. Yeah, it was. And he's not, yeah. like he's not, usually these decks also pack a fireball to win the game. True. Yeah, I think it's going to be, uh, I think the first game causes a little bit favored, I think. Uh, I think the second game, a second turn, him can be very uh, lethal for Coast when uh, Mike is able to cast an early hint to Turak. So, um, yeah. yeah I, I, it's, I, it's all about card advantage, isn't it, with the deck? So yeah. him, of course, is your classic move for, for Mike to get card advantage instead of uh, instead of Coast. If we uh, remember the second game Coast played in the top 16 match where he didn't have two blue in the third, second or third turn, I think that's going to be a problem for Coast if he... Um, if he has that this uh, this game as well. Okay, well, I guess I'll I'll send a signal to the players that they're that they can start, and then we'll uh, yeah we can, we can see what's going to happen. All right. So Ghost will need to two blue, of course, to also have his counter magic open. Yeah. Yeah. So like if because yeah so if Mike can start the game and has a potential turn two him to Turek and maybe takes out some of the blue sources for Ghost, that would be devastating. Yeah, that yeah, that, that would be a very good start for Mike. Um, and who can actually start here? Are they just going to roll the dice, or I think Co starts because he was uh, on top of the of the ranking, the standings. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, hi, hi to the guys in the chat. Are these some people uh, seeing there? It was quite brutal in your favor, Holland. He's uh, typing in the chat. He played this deck uh, against Mike, so. Uh, Ah, so he's our specialist. He can give us some tips. Yeah, I really give us some inputs. Uh, uh, I love to see those two juicems in there. I think it's really cool. Absolutely. Oh, look at this opener! Very good opener from Kos. Oh, oh, oh. All right. What I find interesting here, by the way, is that he's choosing to tap um, his mock sapphire. He could have chosen to just have the tundra and the sapphire, right? To have those two blue open for possible counter magic. Yeah, the only thing maybe a, a black lotus. Um, yeah. He has the two blue already, so. Um, also, pretty decent start for Mike just with a soul ring. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting because Mike obviously is a very good player. Yeah, he, uh, he has played several top sixteens in the Winter Derby, also in the Summer Derby as well. Yeah, very experienced player. Yeah, 
absolutely. And I think he he played a similar deck uh, to this one before in other derbies. Uh, oh, that's an early tome for Coast with Counterspell backup and a Black Lotus. Yeah, and also because, of course, that um, a Felwer Stone can now also produce blue mana because of Mike's Underground Sea, so that's kind of nice for Coast. Exactly, yeah. Things are looking really good for Coast, actually, when I'm looking at this. I think so, yeah. But yeah, Mike I'm, is probably going to put pressure on the board right now. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm expecting a is... creature, right? Yeah, depending on... I'm curious what Coast has in his hands. If he has an answer to the first threat of Mike, then he has a good hand. Is that one card in Kosa's hand? I think it's one, or is it two? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one. I think it's one, yeah. I'm drinking a beer, by the way. Cheers. Nice. Cheers. If you hear something. <laughs> you have water again. Uh, yes, I do still. <laughs> <laughs> still recovering. Still recovering, yeah. Ah, good. Got yeah, a little bit of ice. Ice, sure. <laughs> ice water. There we see a city of brass from Mike. What's he gonna do here? Taking a damage. Okay, there's that set roll. Three, three, regenerate. Getting the bonus yeah. because of the underground sea. Yeah. No source. play lightning. Yeah, that's true. No, no I mean, swords, no counter spell. Yeah, and the factory is not enough for Coast because the troll can regenerate, of course. So, but I mean, you know, Coast is eventually going to draw into something with that gem they told, and and he can take some hits. That's what we saw uh, two days ago as well. That's the thing with the deck, right? As, as long as you're still alive, you can still win it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So interesting here that he's not using his factory for the mana. Yeah, that's true. Maybe he wants to block potentially. Ah, if he can now strip mine the underground sea, so to make the troll the two-two creature. That okay. That could be a good strategy, also because Mike's X pretty creature heavy. Yeah. So I mean, and Coast can still counter with the black lotus uh, potentially. Yeah, and, and Mike needs double black. Ooh, second the lotus. Interesting. Another book. That's this surprises very me. Very greedy, Coast. Ooh. It surprises me as well. Oof, that's, that's a little risky, I think. I think so, too. Could that's it be that, that he maybe has a draw seven or something in hand? No, then you want to keep the Lotus. Yeah, yeah you definitely want to keep it, yeah. Interesting move. <laughs> kind of giving Mike an opener here, saying, I'm not going to counter, I'm not going to do anything. Uh, just play, for example, send you Vampire if you can find another mana source. Choose Jin. I yeah. mean, he's going to attack for sure. He's probably first going to attack with a Sedge. Okay, strip mine. Interesting. What would you strip here? I think I would strip the Factory. Because with the Felwer Stone, Coach has access to all colored mana. Yeah, so taking away the Tundra is not going to solve the, the that problem for Mike. Use on Jin? Ooh, probably. <laughs> Ghost, 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 Ghost. Yeah. I hope he has an answer for this. Okay, if not expect, there could be worse. Yeah. Is that a mana burn also? Or do you think... Um... Yeah, I think they're playing with mana burn, right? I could put it on the chat. Nah, maybe I think they know what they're doing, so... Yeah. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Here, I think here he's you taking go. it already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always the risk that you start to meddle too quickly with stuff. And they, 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 very, <laughs> yeah. they, they both know what they're doing. They've been playing this game forever. So anyway, passing turn here. So Ghost has taken some damage down to 17. And he needs to take care of that hippie. I mean, that's the biggest problem yeah. now. Eh? Because you don't want to discard anything. Only has one card in hand. Ah, he's got enough mana to draw. At least use the gem they told I'm still surprised about that he played out that second one. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know. Um, Ron, uh, yes, Coast do has a balance that uh, would be a good card in this position, and that of course could be a reason for playing out the the second uh, tome. Yeah, but if Coast would have a balance, I think he would play it 
he would not doubt. No, he would do it right now. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he's a very good would actor. He... Like, oh, what to do? I don't know. <laughs> no, he's not. I know him. He's not. No. <laughs> So did, did you give him some tips, by the way, or not before this this match? No, no, we we didn't really talk about uh, about this match, or no? Yeah, because you're you know you you usually play the deck uh, instead of Ko, so that's why it's also funny for me seeing Ko's playing it now. Yeah, it's also funny for me to see him. Uh... <laughs> yeah, so I thought maybe you could, you would give him uh, some tips for this matchup. No, I think I would. Uh, yeah. No, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's, it looks pretty good for Mike at this moment. Yes, and does Mike have counter magic in his deck as well? I kind of forgot. Let me check his No, list. he doesn't. He doesn't. Okay, the reason I'm asking no. is that because then it makes sense that goes if he has a sword, he can just wait till the absolute end or else it would have been better to play it when Mike was stepped out. Yeah, that's true. But that's not relevant in this case. So no, maybe yes. he still has swords in hand. Yeah, yeah. I guess we're going to find out because I mean, Mike's going to swing in with the with the specter, and 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 you don't want to have that damage. You don't want to discard a card. Yeah, that's true. Tappity tap tap. Brain geyser. Brain geyser. Oh, brain geyser. Counterspell. I think this is the second turn that. If Coach would have stripped mine the underground COA. What surprises me here as well, but maybe I'm missing something, is uh, I've expe I expected Coach to maybe activate his Jam Day Tome to maybe find a counter spell and counter the, the Brain Geyser. Yeah, but if you draw a powerful sorcery, the, the chances are it gets taken away by the, by the hippie. Yeah? Okay. So that's maybe uh, his reasoning. But things are not looking good for Ghost here. I mean, it, he started off really well, but he just he's Correct. not finding anything. Nothing in hand now. Taking oh. lots of damage. One mana too few to draw two cards. I wonder what the guys in the chat think. Do you think Ko should have stripped away the Underground Sea earlier on? Because the troll is then also 2-2. Two, two. And for now, of course, he, he, he might want to choose to strip away the, the, the factory just because of the pressure. Yeah, that could be. Yeah. But I think Hippie is still the, the main target, right? He wants to get rid of that Hippie. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that he's still doubting what to do says enough. And Mike has a lot of cards in his hand, and that's also um, yeah. very important, I think. This is not going well for Coase here. Three cards in hand. Let's hope for him that it, one of those cards is a Swords. It's looking really good for Mike. And um, I think after sideboard, because Mike has a very strong sideboard against Coase. Yeah, I think so too. It's going to be even tougher. And, yeah. yeah, that's absolutely true. Okay, Mike, what are you going to do? <laughs> I like Mike's playmat, by the way. Uh, I must say I have it also. <laughs> I think it's an, <laughs> a, a 1995 or 1996 uh, Calsa Brain. Or nice. Uh, later one. I think there's always a risk with playmats because there's so many good looking playmats that you end up with a lot of them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But these must be quite hard to get, right? These kind of playmats now. Yeah, we bought them in the in the store. Uh, him to oh Turek. really? That's so cool. Him to Turek, yeah. first him of the match, and this is so, so bad for Kos. He's gonna lose these cards. He's gonna lose a card to Hippie. Uh, then his hand's gone. Yeah, Kos is not happy at this moment. I'm <laughs> pretty sure. Recall. Terrible cards here. Yeah, recall is good, of course, but not in this position. And then seven damage. Kos has. Yeah, this is gonna be. Uh, He's gonna drop to to, to to man to two. To, to five, right? He's, he's on 12. Yeah, the factory also. Huh? So it's yeah, going to yeah. be... Uh, so he's going to take seven. He's on 12. So it's going to go to five, I think. Ex he's going... Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, he's got... After this, he's only got one more turn. He needs just a brilliant top deck. He needs a that balance. balance. Yeah. A balance would solve everything. True. Because then the <laughs> yeah. hand's gone of Mike, the creatures are gone, he can strip the factory, 
and and he yeah. will be left with uh, jam day tones with mana to, to put into it so demonic tutor and sensor recall or balance would be really good for ghost so he's got a couple of outs and also like one creature removal can at least buy him one turn Oof. Ooh. things got complicated uh, I think Ko should uh, get rid of the Mishash Factory right now. Yeah, yeah, that's probably what he's going to do or not. Who's going to play out something? Disenchant, Disenchant. okay. Uh, the other one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some wishful thinking from Mike. But still, is it? Mike is in a very good position here. Ko's dropping to seven. People say that things would have looked different if the coach stripped away the underground sea, but we don't know if Mike still has a second black one uh, mana source in his hand huh? because he cast it two factory. He played two factories afterwards. <clears throat> yeah, and perhaps he's trying to bait that strip mine as well. That's also a good point. Could be. Yeah, coach needs to use it for the factory right now. Yeah, Koz is on seven. So the way it looks right now, at least he's going to survive for one more turn, right? He can strip the factory, then take five damage. You'll there oh, you go. <laughs> there's the balance. Oh, oh, oh. Come back, King Koz. <laughs> Damn. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done, Koz. <laughs> Good top deck, Koz. The top deck I'm going to drink a sip of beer. <laughs> oh, man. This is so tough for Mike. And are we going to see that classic the deck move, right? When you think, oh, I got him. And then he comes back when he's on like two life or something and wins the game. We're not there yet, of course. But now Mike has to discard a lot. He's going to lose two creatures. Yeah. And the factory with the strip mine, of course. Yeah. And then Coast draws two or three cards a turn. But of course, if you're Coast, you don't have to use the strip now. You can just pass turn and... Wait until Mike animates and attacks. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. That's true. But um, he has an answer for all the three threats on the board right now. And Mike, of course, a little bit in the tank. Can actually put the audio up a little bit. So we can hear the players. Yeah, this um, is tough for Mike. Hmm. Yeah. Wow, man, Coast is oh, really getting away with this here. <laughs> but yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Okay. But also, you can um, say that's the reason why this card is in this deck, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, and actually, when we were like kind of naming the outs, he had a couple. And because Tudor yeah. balance, but also just creature removal would have helped him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, I hope we. Maybe we, maybe we see a similar game to the one from yesterday. And and of course, because of the Jam Day Tome, yeah, you could draw hmm. twice as many cards. So that kind of gets you a little bit closer statistically to those outs. That's true. Yeah, that's yeah, true. I guess I'll just discard, I'll discard City, Hippie, and a Demonic Tutor. Ooh, oh, Demonic Tutor. Demonic Tutor. I wonder now what's in his hand. Uh, it's probably a good card. <laughs> <laughs> what could it be? Uh, maybe uh, Assessor Recall? Then I'll maybe a fireball or something. Oh. Maybe something to finish him off. Yeah, that's a good point because he's on seven. But still, I mean, fireball, he doesn't have enough. No, maybe he could wait one turn. So here he's animating. We're expecting him now to strip, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because of course, Ghost knows this as well. What if he has that fireball in hand? I'm going to take a damage. I'll play a Juzum. Or what oh, if it's a Juzum wow. Jin? <laughs> I do like this from Mike. It's kind of like gutsy, right? You're going to keep your big fatty. I like it. Yeah. Nice. So there it goes. What can he find? Of course, he can draw an extra card. He only needs just one Swords to Plowshares. Okay. Just one white. He needs to cast it. So that's no problem. Yeah. Factory. At least he can oh. jump with the factory. And Pearl. Mike has lightning bolt, huh? so he cannot afford to... Um, Good point. Uh, maybe if he has a, a counterspell in his hand, but otherwise... So, so potentially... Yeah, go on. No, yeah, I just wanted to ask, so if you would be close, you would definitely jump here. Yep. 
if he has no counter spell for sure. Yeah. Man, 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 man. I love to see you choose him, I have to admit. He's just <laughs> yeah, me great. too. I think in a similar situation, uh, um, Megu beat me in the finals of Raging Bull. I was playing the deck and he beat me with a uh, Yuzum Jin. That was Dead Guy on steroids, right? Had a lot of similarities yeah, with, uh, well, not a lot with the deck of Mike. Some, some, some. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I um, I played Mike once. There was It was in um, in London, in the Team Unified World Cup. Uh, that was really nice. I hear Ko say ayoyoy. That's not a good sign, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, he did say that? Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, I've got like the volume open a little bit that we can kind of follow the interaction a little. But uh, I think, yeah. If your goes, maybe he has a counter spell. That's why he's doubting. And he's like, should oh, I go he can to animate two? Uh... He can animate the factory with the Mox Pearl. Huh? Even even with a counter spell in hand, I would five. jump. Who is Ooh. taking the five? Yeah, wow, that's gutsy. I think we're going to see an option here. A bolt or something from Mike, maybe? So he has three bolts and one fireball in his deck. He's passing turn. Now Ooh. he's going to draw very risky. Very risky. Is he going to get killed now? <laughs> I think he's gonna get killed. Oh, he's allowing it. <laughs> because Mike went through his head, right? So like, oh, he's gonna kill now. That's very risky from Ghost. I think he's really playing towards his outs now, right? He's like, okay, I've probably lost. So I'm gonna take some risks here to try to get back into this. Yeah. Right? I think that's his reasoning. Absolutely, yeah. So he's like, I have to play high stakes because I'm just that far behind right now. I need to find... Island. Uh, a swords or something to get rid of the Juzan. So he passed the turn. So he passed the turn. All right. Which says nothing, because maybe he still has that swords. Mm -hmm. Remember, they've seen each other's deck photos, so Kos knows that Mike is not playing with counter magic. But Mike also plays with Sorcerer Plowshares. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we'll just. Uh, Kos would that. still be on one. So here we're going to. Yeah, he is going to jump here. Or are we going to see a disenchant, maybe, from Mike? You're going to see something, for sure. Yeah. Source of luxuries. There's a counterspell. Poo, but that does mean... Oh! Then he's, then he's done. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All yep, right. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, I mean, just really Coast couldn't find that removal, and I think... He was just behind too much there at the start. So that's the first game here for Mike. And um, I guess we're going to look at the at the uh, sideboards. Yeah, I, uh, this is actually yep. the first deck that I've ever played Juzam in. I really Let me like change this here. I don't, I all right. Like the best yeah, I think um, Mike has quite some things to put in. More yeah. than goes. Let me just get uh, Mike's photo here for the viewers. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so let maybe start with with Mike. That's an interesting option. So I've got it now on the, on the screen. What do you think is going to board in? Well, um, I think the energy flux for sure. Maybe a red elemental blast, and um, the question is how many divine offerings. Uh, probably not the four, but um, yeah, what do you take out? Um, yeah, I was thinking the same because one of the the things he could do because I would definitely keep the hymns in. Um, one, of mm -hmm. the, one of the things he could go for is saying, I'm going to take a little bit of, of my creature force out to put some more control elements in. Yeah, maybe maybe take balance out and sing your vampire. Maybe one sort of plushers or two. Mm -hmm. And I'm also looking at that Armageddon in Mike's sideboard. That looks interesting yeah, because that's... once he has the right creatures, right, he can boom, blow up all the lands. That's true, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I personally hope to see the Shatterstorm because it's very underplayed. I think it's such a cool card. Yeah, he's probably not going to board it in because he just has too many other good options. But yeah, yeah. Can we see how many cards Mike boards in? Or uh... let's have a look. Pro probably I think for Coast it's a bit similar than yesterday, right? It's uh, um... yeah. Let's take a look at Coast's list. Um, so here we see Coast's list. Uh, 
I think Mace will go in. Yeah, Control Magics will go in definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't. Is he gonna do Blue Elemental Blast? I don't think so. I don't. I don't think so. It's too limited. No. Eh, what you can use it for. Yeah. yeah. So probably just the Mace and the two Control Magics. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think so too. Hmm. Yeah, that was uh, that game one didn't go as uh, as Coast wanted to. <laughs> Let's see what the guys in the chat say. I kind of uh, thought that after the top deck uh, of the balance, Coast was going to get back into it, but um, he just yeah. he just couldn't find any swords that entire game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. So Coast got lucky, and he also got a little bit unlucky. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's magic, of course. Yeah, the, Holland is saying that the Armageddon uh, will probably come in for Mike and uh, remove all the swords. And would you would you here go? Would you put energy flux in? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you you put two energy flux in probably, Armageddon. Um, so take out all the swords. Yeah, why not? Yeah, that's a good point because he's only playing with factories anyway, and you can take care of that with the uh, divine offerings and with the disenchants. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be tough for Coast. I think so too. Yeah. At least he's on play again. Yeah. And he started off so well. He had a very explosive start where we were talking, okay, why is he tapping out? Because he cannot counter. But that was a good decision because all that Mike did in that first turn was play a soul ring, which is good, but yeah. not, you know, mind blowing. And after that, I don't know, things kind of went sour. Maybe maybe it was a bit too explosive for Coase. Maybe he would rather have some, uh, some removal instead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he ended up with just a lot of mana sources and not really anything else to do. And then he had two books in hand, right? So he played out the books, yeah. but he didn't have enough mana to double draw. And yeah, it was kind of like slow, slow, slow. Yeah. All right, let's see what... Uh... Top eight match, people. One game yeah. up for Mike Van Dyke. Very close to uh, to reaching the semifinals. Now this is hard for Coast as well. What car, what hand are you going to keep? When are you going to mull? Also knowing that Mike's playing with those four hymns. Yeah. I read in the chat that um, Library Energy Flux. Oh, that's a good Sorry, start. yeah, you read in the chat, sorry. Well, that's, uh, that's a good point. That uh, How good is Energy Flux if Coast has a lot of disenchants? Um, I wonder if he, if he will put it in. Maybe not. Yeah. yeah, so then it could be an easy target to, to point your disenchant yeah. at. Yeah. yeah. So Mike starting with double mocks. Could be, uh, There's a bad lance. And go. Okay, All no right. no such troll. That's the good news for Kos here. Yeah. And now he has... And not, too and not too black, huh? True, and an active lower here for Kos, so he's drawing extra cards. Is, is Mike, I mean, he's got Chaos Orb, he's got Strip Mine, but does he have any other ways to get rid of lands? Uh, well, he's got him to Turak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. That'll keep him off of the seven cards, and uh, and he probably boarded in Armageddon, so that's, uh, that's another way. <laughs> yeah, that's a, good, that's a good point. Those hymns are probably going to be more influential. Yeah, <laughs> It's more that I'm used to, and it, I guess you're as well, right, playing Swedish, you're always kind of like, I want to have four answers to lands. That's kind exactly, of my, my yeah. mantra. And I've got Chaos Orb and Strip or two, and then I need two more. But of course, if you've got Hymns, that's a great... Uh, and Hippies, that's a great answer to, to Aloha. Well, I guess Hymns a better one, but... That's the Swords of Love shares. Yeah. So finally, Coase is finding his first Swords of the match. Congratulations, <laughs> Coase. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking back at the matches from yesterday, and mm. Coase didn't play a single Mox. Really? Mm. I missed yeah, that as well. He did one. play a Felwerstone, I think. True, yeah. Mm, okay, so now he's got two blue. This is bad news for Mike here. It is. Staring down at that active Loa and the deck player with two blue. And remember, Kos is playing yep. four counter spells, two power sinks, and a mana drain. There must be a time walk, yeah. 
Otherwise, you don't... Uh... You don't tap out, of course. Yeah. No. <laughs> and again, he's got seven in hand, I guess. Yeah, exactly. There he goes. Yeah. Card number eight. So many cards already from this uh, one Loa. It's still so funny that Richard Garfield made Arabian Nights without playtesting and all this, these cards were in his head. <laughs> and, and he made the world champion. He, he made a deck as well, right? Where he, he played. There was this set that you could buy with a deck from Richard Garfield and a deck from... There was one other player and he just put four um, yeah. Loas in his deck. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, there's a, a small video on YouTube where he plays in a, in a, in a game store somewhere. Really? And... Yeah, and he plays with the four libraries. Fuck. You can see him playing it. And uh, he says, yeah, it's a good card. And then he taps it for another card and another card. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah, so funny. Because at first it wasn't wild, wildly seen as a good card. It took some time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, magic evolved in, the, in these years. I know that when they made Antiquities, that one of the most broken cards, according to the people uh, from the testing team, which, which card? I'm oh, 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 I think a counterspell here. Mana Drain. Mana Drain. What card from Antiquities do you think the test team at the time thought was the most broken? Candelabra? No, no. Or Ornithopter, because it was zero mana for an O2 <laughs> creature. It was crazy. <laughs> it's ridiculously, over, ridiculously overpowered, of, of course. In, in their idea, <laughs> you got a creature for free, and that was just crazy. Too much. They didn't think about <laughs> card advantage or the fact that you cannot or, or, play another card. Or, or that it doesn't deal damage. <laughs> it has no power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, things are looking up for Kos with this counter. Yeah, oh, this is, a... this is brutal, right? Oh, this oh, is very oh, brutal. Oh, oh. Ooh, guys. Energy flux, there it is. And he attacks for two. And again, he goes, I mean, that, he did this last time as well, I think, used the mana drain mana for, for a mind twist. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. All right. Bad news for Mike here. And of course, goes because he has that active low, he's going to have answers all the time. He's going to counter a possible him if he wants to. I mean... Yeah. He'll have all the answers. And now he's probably going to slowly chip away at Mike's life with that factory. There's another one. So he can activate yeah. with the jet, pump it, deal three damage here to Mike. Yeah. I mean, chances are the factory will be removed, but but still he has another one. Because Coase has to be a bit careful with his factories. Huh? He only has four and it's his only win condition, damage-wise. So would you now, because he's going to attack with a 2-2, I guess, I mean, there's no need to, to protect it yet. Like, let's say Mike plays a plow or this. I don't think he was going to counter. Not not if you have another one in play. No, I don't think so. Yeah. But if it's his only one in play, then... Okay, Ooh. Juzam. Are we going to see a Swords or Counter spell from Kos? No. no. All right. There is another source. He's probably now going to draw an extra card with the Loa. And yep, yeah, there's a source. Of course, the annoying thing here is 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 Focus. He's giving Mike five life, so it's giving him extra time again. Yep, yeah, that's true. And, and there we the see end. that uh, attack. Yeah. 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 yeah, Mike has more creatures than Coes has sorts of plowshares, of course. But um, he needs, yeah, I guess. Coast I need guess Coes needs the. Although Abyss is not great against his deck, eh? Yeah, I think it's very good. I think it's. Um, oh, of course. No, sorry. Abyss is. Uh, it doesn't kill artifact creatures. It does kill black creatures. Sorry, I'm a bit yeah. confused. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's very good against his deck, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think resolving Abyss uh, would be a huge thing. Looks like they're discussing the life totals a little bit. Seems that he's a bit higher. No, he's on 19. Okay. How's your Spanish, uh, Thomas? My, my Spanish? Yeah, we, <laughs> I think we have some Spanish in the... We need uh, we need your, we need your brother, chef. man. We need third grammar. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we should play in Hilversum again. Yeah, please. Yeah, we yeah, should it do it. It was fun, right? Good. Yeah. I traded with your uh, brother uh, yesterday. 
with oh, Reborn. He's, yeah, but I'm hearing he's... nasty stuff about you, man. You have a lot of play sets and you're really like hoarding up a lot of good blue cards. No, I'm I traded my channel against his um, power sync. I think I that was a good oh, deal that's for nice. him, right? That's so, nice that you're doing that, especially since you're playing. I'm Tron, also a so. giver, eh? <laughs> okay, I'll take it all back. I take it all back. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we see uh we see Ghost here finding some more cards. And I guess he's four. attacking for four, yeah. So, so Mike with his disenchants and his divine offerings and lightning bolts if they are still in. It's hard um, to see Mike's life total, by the way. I think it's on twelve. That's a good question. There's ancestral recall. So he's gonna draw. I mean, you want to counter this, right? Although he doesn't have two blue. So if he counters this, he cannot play another counter spell. He cannot power sync because Mike has too much mana. So he's going to let this resolve. Yeah. Ooh. Three fresh That's cards it. for Mike. Okay. Yeah, the, we've got some reborn chat now in the going on. <laughs> Jeff, great to hear, and uh, and Hank, uh, reserve it for me, the Adaka ways. <laughs> Please. But let's let's. Okay, there we've got hypnotic specter. Um, that's not really something for Ghost to worry about, I guess. I mean, he probably has some some creature removal on hand. So, ooh, hoo, hoo, time walk. Yeah, again, I mean, if it depends, of course, of Ghost's hand. I mean, if he's got his swords, he could just, you know, swords the hippie, give Mike the extra turn, keep a counter spell in yeah. hand. Yeah. I mean, Armageddon is in the graveyard, and that's something Coach usually should worry about a lot. Yeah, yeah, Armageddon is a game changer. Yeah. Also because it, of course, takes away the factories, which is his, his win con. Absolutely, yeah. It is interesting to see how Mike kind of got back into this with that one ancestral recall. Yeah, that's true. And you can see, I mean, the the, the deck player has seven or eight cards in hand, and you think he has all the answers, but Coase doesn't have a counter spell in his hand. Otherwise, he would. Otherwise, he would have countered the ancestral recall, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so I think I, so. I think Mike's now on fourteen. It's really hard to see. Yeah. <laughs> And he's gonna ooh demonic tutor. Oh, are we now gonna see a counter spell? Or are you just gonna let him look up whatever card it is and counter that one? Well, I think maybe he's going for mind twist since Kos has likely not oh, a counter spell in his hand. That would be brutal. If 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 he got he probably is, if he gets to resolve the mind twist, I mean things are looking good again for Mike. Yeah, well, there is pressure on the board from Coase's side, yeah? but... Um, yes, but I think what we're what also right? see seeing is the downside of Swords to Plowshares as a removal spell, right? Because he's given Mike Correct. a lot of life. Yeah, that's, that's very, very true. So Mike, I'm curious what he will... Um, is there any anything else he, he could take instead of the... You think maybe balance? Or don't you think that's a good idea? Yeah, the thing with balance is it's not going to solve the two factories. It also depends what else he has in hand, of course, because then maybe if he's able to end play balance and maybe play a creature as well in the same turn. Right? I think if you... I'm not sure. I think if he if he took balance, I think he takes more cards, cards out of Koza's hand than taking a mind twist. Because I think he can mind twist for four. And assume Coase has ah, uh, seven cards in hand. Yeah, and Mike's got three cards in hand now. Oh, interesting. And if he casts balance, it's two, so then he, he can remove five cards. You're good in maps, Nick. And he has a land. <laughs> he has fewer land, Mike. Yeah? So, oh, there he... Yeah, there is a mind okay, twist. Okay, so there is a mind twist. I maybe wonder, he boarded out balance? Yeah, oh, yeah, maybe. Ooh, oh, counterspell. He does have the counterspell. Do you think that maybe Coase kept the counterspell... When Mike casts the ancestral recall, yes, I think so. For something more lethal, more yeah, I, th I think Mike probably also assumed Coast didn't have a counterspell. 
the thing is, the thing is, I guess when you're when you're Kos and, and he's playing this deck really, really good, right? He, he knows that players will always try to lure out counter spells. And there are people that kind of do that with an ancestral recall. So maybe he was a bit afraid as well. If he would counter True. the recall yeah. to then maybe get the twist. But uh, yeah. Uh, would you, if Kos goes for time walk, do you think he, he's he there? And we there. can't see the life total. It's going to be five damage and six damage, 11 damage for Kos. If he takes time walk, but I'm not sure if that's enough. We can. What do you we, think? We can ask Mike. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. He gets his keyboard. Okay. <laughs> He's on 10. Oh, good luck. Oh, he's on 10. <laughs> he's on 10. I didn't mean it to, uh, that he missed something. No, no, no. Oh, he's oh, now no. on six. Okay. Okay. Well, then I guess it's... Oh, because it's not uh, taking time walk. Oh, no, was the time walk already in the graveyard, maybe? Mm -hmm. I think oh, the... yeah. Time walk was in the graveyard. Yeah, I think he true. played it at the start of the game. So he probably tutored for, again, we don't know what's in his hand, but if he doesn't have a counter spell in hand, he probably tutored for a counter spell. That's it. Okay. Wow. It's one, a one. 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 All right. <laughs> and now we don't know what he tutored for. That's a bit frustrating. But uh, I think counter spell. Yeah, probably, right? Yeah, I think so. Just to have complete control. When you're winning, you're ahead on board, counter spell is the way to go. So, do you think? Um, wow! Do you think Kos will make some changes in his deck. Um, after seeing I, the cards that Mike's play, I don't think so. What do you think? No, mm, I also don't think so. Maybe Mike. Mm, it's difficult to know what he put in, but Mike is going to make some changes. Kos also. I mean, if you look at it from Mike's perspective, you know, let's be fair. He's playing against the deck and goes opens with Aloha, you know, that, yeah. True, of course. It, yeah, that, 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 that can happen. So it for me, it wouldn't be a, a reason to completely change my whole sideboard plan based on that. No, that's true. That's true. But the fact that you're on the play uh, is a difference. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, because that's because a good I point. think Mike probably wants to cast a him uh, second turn. If possible, do do you think that maybe if he boarded out some creatures before that he's gonna, he probably didn't, but still that he's then gonna board them in now. And of course he didn't. If he would have had kept the swords again, we don't know what he, how he boarded. Then maybe he would have had more answers to the to the factories as well. Yeah, although I think it's unlikely that Kos, in the middle of the game, ends up with three factories and killing him. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, I guess the biggest thing, right, because we talked about energy flux before, is that energy flux, unfortunately, for, for Mike, doesn't work against those factories. So, sorry, can you repeat that? Now that energy flux for Mike doesn't work against the factories of Ghost, and the factories, no, we saw that, yeah. that, that those are the way that Ghost wants to win the game. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um Yeah, I think for Ghost is pretty risky, eh? since he doesn't play Lightning Bolt or Fireball, and his um, mirror universe is one of his um, strategies, so he really depends on the on the factories. Because yeah, has no Sarah Angels oh, in the sideboard. And mirror universe is such a nice target to play a divine offering on. Oh. If Coach would have Sarah Angel in the sideboard, that would be a no-brainer to put them in. Uh, but he does have the two control magics, which are basically they have the same function. As True, but with Disenchant and Red Elemental Blast, it's a little bit tricky, yeah? because... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, I really love Sarah Angel in the sideboard of the deck. So why didn't Coase go for it? Um, yeah, good question. I don't know. We, we didn't talk about it, but uh, I don't know. I, I think, yeah. Do you also like it in the sideboard because you usually play creature less in the main board, not counting the factories? And then your exactly. opponent is yeah. probably going to board out the creature removal, and then you have that one Sarah Angel. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I know that uh, the latest version of, uh, if I'm not mistaken, of uh, Martin Lindstrom is uh, four Sarah Angels in the sideboard. <laughs> four. Yeah. Sweet. So that's going all in uh, Sarah Angel wise. So. Um, 
I mean, for a lot of decks, Sarah Angel is a huge problem. I think Mike's deck is a good example for that. And this, this yes. Actually... At least he's got two Sengir vampires. Um, he's got some removal, of course. Yeah. Yeah, and just the fact that, that, that Sarah doesn't tap is insane. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the best answer to creatures. Unfortunately, Castle is not uh, not good enough to be played, or else you would have a permanent 4-6, which is pretty That's cool. That's true, yeah. Flavor-wise, I don't like it, because you're going out of the castle to attack, so you shouldn't get a bonus. But yeah. I was I was hoping, with the changes in rule stacks, <laughs> a lot of people, so everybody listening, would start playing with Castle, because Castle also works as long as your creature is untapped. That's the thing you got to do. So make a deck with Yoshin Soldiers, with Sarah Angels, and with Castles. And with Zephyr Falcons. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you think. Uh, right? I can learn a lot from it. Yeah. I mean, Yoshin Soldier, you got a 1-6 body for 3 mana. That's good value. 1-4, one 1-4. Four, eh? one oh, with, with Castle. With Castle. Yeah, it's yeah, a 1-6. Yeah, it's, it's huge. It's huge. The Balduvian Hydra we talked about uh, would have been 3 toughness as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Balduvian Hydra... <laughs> It's like giving a giant tortoise ability to all the to, to all the untapped creatures, right? Exactly. And you can play it with maze, and then when your opponent does something fishy, you just use the maze, it gets the bonus again. You take yeah. it out of combat anyway, but it's yeah. Ah well. We I, I Ooh, yeah. Another one. Ooh, another one is this double mole for Mike? On game yeah. number three. Wow. I mean Coase is all back in this after losing that game one. Um yeah, I was very impressed with Mike's deck. Then we saw that lower game, and now Mike's taking yeah. a double mole. I can imagine that maybe Mike is looking for a him. And yeah, because I think that would be really, yeah, it could be really a good start for Mike to cast second turn him. Um, would he take such a big risk, though? Yeah. Yeah. So two cards on the bottom. He's also on the play. Do you think, uh, actually, uh, Thomas, that uh, when you play castle, you should play moat as well? Because why <laughs> why should you have a moat if you have no castle? You know, then the moat is in the middle of, of I think if you play moat, the moat should only work if you play castle, and exactly. and if you play fortified area, you get a bonus like a wall of <laughs> a wall of swords just enters the game automatically, something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But then, yeah, if people end up with Battle Ram, or how's, how's the card called? Uh, Battering Ram from Antiquities. Battering Ram. Yeah, with banding as well. It's it's brutal. And you can play uh, those yeah. rats that cannot be blocked by walls. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I looked at the um, um, decks from the um, uh, Team Unified World Cup, and Slanfan was uh, <laughs> was playing a Walls Lich deck. It was crazy. It was the <laughs> fantastic wow. deck. When I, it's just cool to see people trying something out with walls. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's so old school walls. Here we yeah. see Mike now really in the tank, of course, deciding what to put on the bottom. So he's picked one card so far. So it looks like he's going to go with this one. Or could it be his first mulligan? No, it's his second. It's, um... That must be so tough. That must be so tough. Yeah. Oh... I mean, if he could open Underground Sea, Mox Jet, him, at least that would be something. But then still, he's very, very behind card-wise. But Yeah, Mox... Ancestral yeah, Recall, for... of course, would be great for him as well. Yeah, absolutely. Balance. I guess That's this is... Oh, are we going to see Balance? No. I guess this could be one of the reasons to always play with Balance, because the card is so ridiculously good when you're behind. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there's the opener from I mean, Coast with the Ruby. Martin Berlin won Noobcon with the deck without um, without balance. He replaced it by Stone Rain. <laughs> Sweet. Yep, there's the him to Turek, right? Yeah, that, that's what he wanted. Oh, that's a recall. very good answer. A response. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, that's many, a good answer. How many cards do we see here for Coase? One, two, three, four, eight cards. He's going to lose two, so he's going to have six still. And four! Ooh. 
two very important restricted cards. But... Oh, demonic tutor but... and recall. That recall is painful. Yeah. How many uh, recall the... does he play yeah. again? One. One. Yeah. One. Yeah. Well, oh, that's that's. Well. What he wants early game, I think, is answers to threats. So I think maybe Disenchant and Swords of Closure is more important in his hand right now. But this is really good for the game. This yeah, is really good for the game, yeah. And I think Ghost is still a heavy favorite because he's got the card advantage. Mike has one card in hand. Yeah, Soul Ring, very good. I think good. so. Pass turn, probably. I mean, if, if you're, by the way, if you're, if you're Mike, would you now maybe flip on one of the two lands here on the ground seas so that Ghost cannot counter? Well, he has power sync also. And with the Soul Ring in play, it doesn't give an, uh, yeah. That's a good point. Maybe if there was a white source uh, among the lands, it could have been different, but... Uh, another another him. Okay, are we going to see Counterspell here? I mean, if he has it, yeah. There's the Counterspell. So again, I mean, yeah, it's a risk you're taking. If Mike would have played Chaos Orb, then maybe Ghost would have played Power Sync instead of, yeah. Yeah. It's hard to make these decisions. Um, City of Brass for Ghost. And Bastard. Only one card for Mike. And how many cards does your brother have? Three, I think? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> From what I know, Coase puts down his card on the board when he feels very comfortable. <laughs> so I think Coase has good cards in his hand. I actually, it's one of the things that I, I like from uh, how Brian Weissman, for example, plays. He always puts his cards down. He knows what's in his hand. He knows how to interact. And I think that yeah. can be sometimes kind of intimidating, right? When someone is just leaning backwards, very relaxed. I know he's also very focused on, uh, on body language. Uh, I'm not surprised at all. I think he's focused on all aspects of the game. But... <laughs> yeah. So here we see Hippie goes not doing anything, so perhaps he's got his swords in hand. Yeah. Um, there's a Mox, or maybe he doesn't have anything. There's no, a I book. I think so. Oh, Time, time Walk. walk. <laughs> Man. Yeah, because the book is going to be an easy target for the, for the Chaos Orb, of course. Yeah, and now he can activate it again, trying to find um, an answer for the hippie. Yeah. Well, that's not an answer. <laughs> oh, Ooh, the abyss is making the entrance here. This is a big problem for Mike. Yeah. I think he needs he to use the Chaos Orb on the abyss. Or not. Am I saying something stupid? No, the the hypno would uh, not expector would would go away anyway. But um... yeah, yeah, I know that. But would you now use the chaos orb on the on the abyss, or would you say the book is more devastating? Maybe it depends on what he has in his hands. If he have a few creatures in his hand to put pressure, I would go for the abyss. But otherwise, I would definitely go for the book because also he has the um, yeah. He's got he's got he's got of course more enchantment removal. So you're right. If he has no pressure, then why just not take care of the book? And, and hope that you draw into an answer to that enchantment. Right, he's playing maybe for disenchant, so. And maybe he boarded in some divine offerings. Um, yeah, but divine or, offering, of course, doesn't work against enchantments. Yeah, that's true. And the energy flux is also, yeah. Energy flux would be great on this board, by the way. Yeah, that's true. But he has no blue. So maybe, um, maybe he has blue cards in his hand. Oh, this is tough for Mike. It's also very good. Uh, um, Blazer Tube says, yeah, Coast could very well be the Coast there, as a disenchant in his head. Yeah, and there's a pass. In response, we see the Chaos Orb activation because Coast is tapping out or almost tapping out uh, to draw that card. Yeah, so that mean, may, maybe it means he doesn't have a disenchant. <laughs> yeah, exactly, or else Coast wouldn't have tapped out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Mike's waiting for the right moment to yeah. use the orb. There's the flip. Nice flip. The book's the book. gone. Yeah, yeah, so I think this indicates that Mike doesn't have creatures in hand. Yeah, that could be. Yeah, indeed. But yeah, there's also not pressure at all from Coase's side. So um... He's got the one factory. Um, I guess he's going to attack with the one factory now, right? Yeah, but it's very likely to be uh, to be removed. So 
Oh, there's a second one. So you mean maybe he wants to wait until he has more counter backup? Yeah, or after a mind twist, or he has a mind twist. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe a bit save it for late game. But on the other hand, yeah, Coast is a decent amount of money. Coast didn't money. play uh, <laughs> amount of cards. <laughs> you mean Coast didn't play the the mind twist yet? No, that's true. It was game. the other game. Yeah, yeah, it was the other game. So uh, we have. But Coast doesn't it. attack, so he's. Uh, Yeah, so he's probably worried if I attack uh, Divine Offering, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, there we see a Factory from Mike. Of course, Factories are great in combination with the Abyss. Yeah. But Mike also needs mana, eh? so uh, a Factory is... Yeah, but this is good me. news for Mike, eh? and it shows that it's a really good decision to take care of the, bo uh, the book, because now Goes is top decking, Mike is top decking. So exactly. It's kind of more an even playing field. And, yeah. and, and before that, I really felt that Ghost was ahead, ahead, ahead. And now I'm thinking like, oh, it's kind of leveling here. And of course, Ghost yeah. is playing with a lot of mana sources, but I guess Mike is as well. I think Mike has 27 sources and Ghost 30. Yeah, so Ghost slightly oh, more. Pretty similar, but uh, yeah. Yeah, so but Coast. then we talked about it before. The fact that Coast can just simply wait and refill his hand is, is also bad news for Mike <clears throat> without pressure on the board. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, because his hand is probably full of answers and counter spells. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, the deck. Oh, that deck. Yeah, what a beautiful deck, right? <laughs> that's, uh, that's, a, that's the problem when you play against such an intimidating deck, at least for me, that you know, okay, the longer this is going to take, the deck is probably better at control than I am. So the longer we're top decking, <laughs> right? That, that's the deal, yeah. basically. Yeah. So probably Mike also has a lot of answers in his hand right now. I think Coach really would like to uh, to draw a mind twist. It's a little bit like a stare down, right? Yeah. So go seven in hand, going to draw into eight. Going to play a land here and pass, probably. Yeah. Mike also has his hand full now again. And it's I mean, very likely it, 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 sorry, just it could also be, of course, that, that Mike has a lot of now a lot of creatures in hand, right? Since he took care of the book and he's waiting for an answer for the abyss. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Hmm, very interesting. It's nice that there that, that there's a third game, and this third game is taking long. I, I like it. 20 life each still. Yeah, third games are always great. Yeah. I mean, do we have some action on the, on the, on the chat, Nick? Because you've, you've got an... Uh... Well, um, Mind Twist is game over. Um, they might be waiting for Library of Alexandria. Maybe they have it in their hands. Could be. But I think Coase already has seven cards and he, he played already a, an island with seven cards in hand. So Coase yeah. has no low, I think. Then he would have probably uh, dropped it already. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Disenchant. Okay. On the abyss. This is going to be interesting. No counter is this, spell. Is this end of turning? End of Kozis' turn? or? That's a good question. I don't know. Um, let's find out. I mean, maybe Koz has a second one in his hand. Yeah, right. Or else, or else he would have protected it with with a counter spell because you'd, Probably, ra you, you'd yeah. rather protect the abyss than a counter away a creature fed from Mike. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's got four in hand, or was it five? Went quite quickly. Uh, Mike, you mean? Yeah, Mike. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think goes to seven. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah, what can we say? <laughs> well, I think the players I'm, are waiting. I'm we just, are waiting. I'm just thinking maybe maybe Mike played the disenchant in his main, and he's now thinking, "What am I going to do?" Maybe he was expecting a counter spell. That could very well be. And yeah. now he's yeah. like, "Okay, should I be a stupid fool and and drop my yeah. creatures on the board?" Exactly. So he's it got was, yeah. 
four cards in hand. Turn now. Yeah. 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 I think it's a good decision for Mike to wait. Because if Coast now is going to drop an abyss, you kind of feel like stupid. On the other Maybe hand, Coast is not going to play. Ooh. This is a very important card. Yeah. Regrowth. I think he's going for recall, I would say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Demonic oh, Tutor. Also, Interesting. He could have also gone for re recall and then regrowth and Demonic Tutor. But NSS recall and the Abyss. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I would have saved the... Uh, but, but well, I mean, Mind Twist is... Uh, I mean, it, what do you think, Thomas? Uh, it will be a Mind Twist, right? Oh, goes. <laughs> Put your deck in your grave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to be a Mind Twist, yeah. 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 I'm a little bit jealous of Ghost that he's playing against a deck without counter magic. <laughs> yeah, that's very comfortable in this type of situation. Right, when you make these decisions, you can do it very comfortably. You can just think, okay, duck, 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 and you know it's going to happen. Yeah. Okay, there's the Lotus. It's Got to be a twist, yeah. Why would he? Why would he sacrifice the lotus for it? I don't know. Is your brother? You tell me. <laughs> yeah, that's a good heart, good hand. Is you he gonna so. attack here? Wow! So he's gonna go. He probably has a disenchant or yeah, a blow shot exactly right chance. in response on activation here of Mike. And and the question is: Is Mike gonna do it? Is he gonna force a disenchant? It looked like he wanted to put 16 on, changing his mind now, pumping the factory. There's the response. Mike's going to tap it, probably going to gain three, going to go to 23, going to take four, going to end up on 19 here. It's uh, it's also, um, in retrospect, if he would have um, got back the recall, he could have read Elemental Blasted. So, yeah, looking back, it's it's a good decision. I don't know if Coase had a counterspell back up, probably, but we don't know. Now, and what I like about this play is he's then also able to attack at the same time, um, True. putting up instant pressure, because you don't want to give Mike the chance again to come back and find answers for the factories, right? You don't just want to keep bomb, 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 right? You boom, four again. True. Yeah. There we see the base that came in from the sideboard. Um, there we go. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Look, things look good for Coase. Yes, yeah. There was a small window for Mike in this third game, right? When he kind of had a chance. Yeah. Um, but still, Mike is a very good player, maybe. Oh, maybe yeah. He it's, still it's, has a plan. <laughs> it's not over yet. And what we see here, by the way, he's he's doing that... Uh, is he doing that trick with the maze? Yeah. Does that actually... So I guess that works. I'm not sure if it does. Because what he does is he untaps the factory, then taps the factory again to pump the other factory. Um, but you do that then before damage is dealt. But I'm sure the players know what they're doing. Maybe somebody in the chat can can explain it. Can confirm it, yeah. I mean, Mace is an interesting card. So the life total of Mike is now... I you think it's nine? on nine. There we see a divine offering. There is a oh, counter spell on the divine offering. Makes absolute sense, of course, here to protect the factories when you're so close to the victory. Yeah. And um, you know, I guess he's now doing five because of the maze, right? Because of that trick. So he's going to go to four. Probably, yeah. It's a mox. So coach one. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. All of a sudden, it went very, very quickly. I'm just going to unmute the players here. Well, I mean, I think I'd be okay if you didn't ancestral mind twist me. But, <laughs> um, yeah. The five is actually okay. Like the five I had was all right. Um, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, oh, we, uh, they ask oh, if yeah. we can unmute them. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Yes, yes. There we go. Let's see. Guys, can you hear us? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Congratulations, Coase. Thank you very much. And uh, I just actually had one question. I was doubting a little bit about that Mace of If trick. Because you're attacking with two factories, right? And then you're untapping your Mace to pump the other. 
Mm -hmm. And then you deal five damage, but when you tap your mace, you take it out of combat, right? No, there is a oh. there there is a point that you can use it, and and uh... wait, no, there isn't a point where you can use that. Yeah, yeah. No, not not and still deal me damage with the factory that you untap because the the maze doesn't take it out of combat, but it it prevents the damage that it will deal. So whichever one you maze. That's what I uh, thought as well, but I'm not a rule specialist there, so... Yeah, I, I wasn't thinking... I've seen it reason. before. I'll, I'll look it up because it would be super, super it, stupid, of you, course. You can you can untap it after combat damage is dealt and still be in combat, but you can't... Exactly. You, you either deal the damage with it or you, or you pump with the maze. Yeah, my point is that then the damage tap has already taken place. But, yeah. I, mean, I mean, you were so ahead, Ghost. I don't think it would have mattered much. Um, and maybe you're right. I could I could definitely be wrong. I think I think Mike, the devastating thing in game three, right, was that you had to go back to five cards. Well, uh, I sort of like my five card hand was actually all right. Um, I I think I I can't fight him having ancestral also, and then later mind twisting me. Like those are the things that really yeah. do it. Um, but like I had a double him hand. Um, like I can't I can't throw that back right, and that's better than any of the other you know, six or seven card hands I would have had. Yeah, because um, what, what's kind of your reasoning for going from seven to six and six to five? What kind of hands did you have? Uh, the, the seven card hand had uh, basically, I couldn't cast two of the cards in it. Um, and, well, actually, I couldn't cast any of the cards in it. It was one black source, some double black cards, and then um, like one of, the, one of my off-color cards, and I didn't have the mana to, to cast that either. So there's just a bunch of stuff I couldn't cast unless I drew the right mana in the first hand. And then the second hand was one land. Yeah, and you were probably really hoping for the for the team, of course, when you went down to five. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Um nice. so yeah, I don't think that was like a bad it wasn't a bad five card hand. Um like, also like maybe I messed up the the one part with when he had the abyss out, um, and I killed it. Like I could have just played more guys out, but I was Fairly confident you just had the other abyss in your hand because you've drawn so many cards and not had anything to to play. That's what we but thought that, as well. That's that he... why I didn't play out the guys into it that I had in my hand. Um, yeah, yeah, we um, thought Mike, that as you well. are right. You are right. I, I, it was absolutely a mistake. I could not bump it to five. Yeah, horrible, Ghost. You're a horrible human yeah. being. <laughs> well, it just means that I would have been at three, and I would have had one more draw step. But I yeah, I had I another counter counter spell. Um, yeah, yeah. I had another counter good. spell. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. yeah, mistakes are made all the time. I make mistakes yeah, all the time. Yeah, because yeah, I just would have taken one less damage, right? Each of those three. That's true. Step or That's whatever. true. Yeah. yeah. So. But what was interesting for us to see was uh, we were kind of making predictions, and we were saying, okay, Ghost is probably favorite before sideboarding and after sideboarding. Uh, your deck's looking really good, Mike. And then, Coach, you lost the first yeah. game. So we're, yes. getting, we're getting nervous <laughs> really there. <laughs> or yeah, not I mean, like, you know, like, fa favored doesn't include the games where he libraries me. <laughs> no, that's I true, mean, ga true. game two was a lower game, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, Mike, game one, I had a good strategy with emptying my hand with uh, with the tome. But uh, you had too many threats, and uh, I drew no no answers. So uh, yeah, yeah, that was kind of not how I expected it. But yeah, well, yeah, yeah, because you had zero swords that first game goes. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought if I go back to to six cards on the play against the him deck, it uh, could be devastating. So I opted to just keep the hand with a lot of artifact mana and the, and its own. Mm -hmm. That was my reasoning. Well, Nick, yeah. do you have anything to add? No, I think um, you were also very unlucky, Mike. The third game, with uh, you missed a few land drops, eh? and um, yeah, uh, and no pressure on the board. I think that was also um, pretty important. Yeah. Coast could just sit back and play lands and, and draw cards. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that was a bit unlucky from your side, uh, not to draw any pressure. Yeah. Um, Definitely. Yeah. yeah. That that moment when the abyss was on board, right? You're talking about both players were top decking, and then you know, yeah, the control player is probably gonna take the most advantage of this uh, scenario. Yeah, I, I could have been more patient about it, I guess, because I did have the orb to answer an abyss. 
but I, like I, I couldn't I couldn't sit there. I wasn't drawing more mana, so I, I yeah. Well, and, yeah. And just curious, what, what did you take out? So you take out you took out some plows, I, I, I assume, all of them. Uh, or... Oh me. Yeah. Um. So I, I actually I changed it around a little bit. Like I my and I thought a lot about this actually, and I'm not 100 percent sure what the right thing is. But basically, I, I ended up boarding this way in the final game, and I think this is probably the correct way that I'm supposed to board. I'm not really a big fan of energy flux against the deck, especially if you know that I have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so I actually didn't board them in. Um, so what are the we, other cards? I think the second game we saw one in your uh, hand that was discarded by Mike. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I boarded it in that game, and I just like rethought it afterwards. Ah, okay. I, like, yeah. I don't think I really want this card, actually. Um, yeah. And that's actually my, my normal my normal go-to is to not board that in. Um, what was the other card I boarded? Um, and Armageddon, if that would have, would have resolved, there was a, would have been a huge card uh, at that moment. Yeah. And, uh, um, so it's these seven, and I boarded out um, uh, all, all the swords. Oh, yeah. yeah. That are main deck, all the bolts, and this. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ballas could have could have helped you the second game, but it makes sense that you boarded it out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, there's certainly situations where I can cast it, but I feel like I can't I can't have a dead card in my hand, and it, it ends up being dead in a lot of circumstances. Like, if I have if I have a threat on board, I really just can't cast it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and what what did you board in, Coach? I board in a two control magic and a maze of it, and I took out two disenchant and a fellow stone. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah. Well, thank you guys for the match. Very entertaining. Congratulations, Goes, <laughs> going on to the semis. Yeah, I feel stupid about the Maze of It mistake. Uh, luckily, it was no, not no, uh, okay. tied on one it, life, and uh, that would have been uh, yeah. Don't. It didn't. It didn't impact the uh, uh, the game. I don't think so. Um, no, I don't think so either. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it happens. Man. It was uh, very, very, very nice to, to to. It was the first time we played uh, Mike, right? I think so. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah. Thanks for playing. Yeah, likewise. Yeah, and good luck in your uh, in your next match. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. See you around. Yeah. See you. Okay. All right. See you guys. I'm gonna end the stream. Okay, guys. Later. Yeah, bye. 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 Yeah, bye.